Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Solving Problems in My Farm. Today we're going to learn about far red light. I know there are a lot of questions around far red, so today I will try to make a brief explanation and simple explanation of far red light and how necessary to have this light inside of a plant factory or greenhouses. So let's start explaining about the photosynthetic active radiation that we also call PAR. So PAR is a section of the spectrum from 400 to 700 nanometers and includes a lot of different colors that are directly related to photosynthesis. We have red, we have blue, we have green, that we know those colors are directly related to photosynthesis. That's why sometimes we find those colors on our lamps. But there are sections of the spectrum that can also be related to different plant processes. We have, for example, UV lighting, which can be also a very interesting topic for a different video, and we have far red. So far red is from 700 to 800 nanometers. So it's outside of PAR. It's not directly related to photosynthesis, but we know can be involved in a lot of different plant processes. Based on research, we know about how useful can be far red, and we know that the spectrum that is more useful would be from 700 to 730 or 750 nanometers. We know far red can have implications in different plant processes, like for example, the shading avoidance response that can cause stretching or also the increase of the leaf area. We know it can also be involved in some important processes like flowering and also can be indirectly related to photosynthesis. So depending on the crop that you're working with will be the necessity or to have the option to include a little bit more of far red in a greenhouse, for example, or to add far red in a plant factory. So probably one of the best ways to improve of knowledge about far red is to understand uh, how far red performs in a natural day. So a natural day, I mean greenhouse with natural light, it has far red. So far red is present already in our greenhouse and uh, it's about 25% if we count from 700 to 800 nanometers, we have about 25% of far red. The amount of far red will change through the day. When the sunset is coming, when we have the end of day, then we have more far red. When we have more darkness, we have more far red. So how can we know if it's a good option to add far red to our greenhouse or also to our plant factory? So it would depend on the crop that you're working with and also it will depend on the objectives by the grower. For example, if we work in a greenhouse of a strawberry, we know that a strawberry, uh, the architecture of the plant and the anatomy of the plant sometimes uh, can be improved by far red. For example, uh, we know that pedunco, which is uh, the section that is attaching the fruit to the plant, that section we want to be long because that way it could be easier to harvest. Also, a strawberry grows as a rosette, so it's very easy for the leaves to overlap. So if we want to make you know, the shading avoidance response so the leaves can be more exposed to light, we can add a little bit more of far red. But again, it will depend on uh, the crop that you're working with and the objectives that you have as a grower. So if you ask, is possible or is functional to add more far red to my greenhouse? I will say yes, depending on your project, your crop and your, your objectives. Now, if you're growing plants inside of a plant factory, then uh, of course there is research going on around far red. We know that sometimes far red can have a, a function in photosynthesis by increasing photosynthesis. Why? Because far red, as I mentioned, promotes the shading avoidance response, meaning uh, that the plant is uh, trying to look for the light. So if you want to understand better far red, let's think of far red as darkness. Actually, during the sunset and night, we have more far red. So uh, if you add a little bit of darkness, let's say far red to uh, your plant canopy, then the plant will have a reaction of trying to look for light. So then we have the shading avoidance response, which can also develop a higher uh, leaf area because the plant will, will try to, to look for more, uh, for more light. 
So based on research, uh, we know that by applying a little bit of our red, we can increase also photosynthesis on our plants. It, and we can also increase, increase yield sometimes. So it, it will, of course, depend on the crop. There is a lot of research going on. Uh, however, um, if you ask me, there is research. We have proved that far red can help for different crops, specifically for strawberry. As I mentioned, uh, we know that uh, most of the facilities growing the strawberries, um, they have far red, a little bit of far red. But one aspect that is important to mention is that when you add more far red to your lamp, then the efficacy of the lamp will be reduced. Uh, usually when you have more red, you have more efficacy. When you have more white, for example, you reduce efficacy. And far red is actually outside of bar, so of course it will reduce the efficacy of the lamp. However, uh, as I mentioned, it can have like an indirect function for different plants, so it could be something that can be applicable depending on the project. I will say only at far red if you know that it's going to promote a good response to your plant and to your project and to your objectives. So to make everything like more easy to understand, let's try to summarize the information. So far red is outside of par. This, this is a portion from 700 to 800 nanometers. And usually for horticulture purposes, we try to find far red between 700 and 750 or 30 nanometers. And also understand that we have far red inside of a greenhouse because it's present uh, like 20, 25% of the light uh, inside of a greenhouse, if we count uh, the range from 400 to 800 nanometers, about 25% will be far red. Then we know that far red can help to promote flowering. We know that far red can help to promote elongation, shading avoidance response, and sometimes increase leaf area. And we also know that far red, I forgot to mention this, far red can also promote uh, the development of anthocyanin and some metabolites in plants. So if you're working with red lettuce, for example, we know that far red can also help with the color. So uh, basically far red can have a function also in photosynthesis that is indirect because it's making the plant to look for light. So remember, far red is like darkness and uh, that promotes a response to the plant to look for light. And sometimes that's why we have an increase in photosynthesis because we have uh, more leaves exposed to light and sometimes even the leaves can have a bigger area. However, it will depend on the project because far red can also promote like elongation and malformation of plants. Let's think, for example, about tomato. Tomato, uh, it's a plant that we, we don't want to have like internodes that are super long. So far red, for example, for, for tomato, depending obviously on the quantity and the intensity, it can promote elongation. So uh, we always try to avoid this characteristic, for example, for this specific crop. So again, depending on the crop that you are working with and your objectives will be the necessity or to have the option to use far red. If you want to learn more about far red, let me know on the comments the kind of crop that you are working with and the specific questions that you want to solve about far red. We know there are a lot of questions around far red, so I will try to cover them in uh, this kind of videos. So I hope you enjoyed this information. Remember, my name is Carla Garcia. I am Hort America's technical service and consultant. See you on the next video.